Right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Disney has been doing lots of remakes. And I think it's important to take a look at what Disney has been doing with their live action remakes when we're going to be looking and talking about how to dra train your dragon live action remake. Because it's a, it's a good case study basically on what not to do even though they're doing it. So case in point, when Disney first did their live action remakes it was shot for shot the same. And they were wildly successful. Uh, massive, massive hits. They've crossed over a billion dollars nearly every single one of them. Very, very, very successful films. However, it's a big however, when they started to change things, they started to decline in revenues. People were like, what are you doing? Huh? What's going on here? This, this isn't the classic made-to-live-action that I liked, because you've changed it. And that says something, doesn't it? It says that if you're going to remake a classic film, it's best to remake it, not do an adaptation of it. It's best to do, actually do a live-action remake, right? Or a CGI-rendered remake as per Lion King. It seems odd to take something that was once liked, co-opt the name badge that people enjoyed and are fans of, bastardise it, and then regurgitate it out as a vehicle for a modern day agenda. That's what Disney's been doing lately. Now, How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, great films. I actually quite enjoyed those animated films, to be perfectly honest. I think I watched like two of them anyway. I know there's, there's, there's a lot of them now. But they're wildly successful. They're very, very successful films. Unfortunately, this live action remake is not a remake. It is a readaptation. And apparently, as per the stars, it is its own thing. It's its own interpretation. So it's not actually a remake. And now my excitement starts to dwindle. And I would look at this and say, well, this will just become a bastardized version as a vehicle for a modern day agenda. So let's take a look, ladies and gents. Turn the bell notifications on. Please do hit subscribe and please do follow me over on Twitter at Mr. H Reviews. So let's take a look, shall we? How to Train Your Dragon star Nico Parker says the remake is its own interpretation of the animated original. Why? Why would you do that? Like, genuinely, why? Why would you do that? It seems odd. Why would you, again, just bastardize something? Twist it, manipulate it into something as a vehicle for your nonsense? So according to one of the film's lead actors, Nico Parker, rather than being a proper retelling of the DreamWorks-produced fantasy adventure, the upcoming live-action remake of How to Train Your Dragon will instead deliver its own interpretation of its animated source material. Right. Well, that's not good, genuinely. Uh, the daughter of actress Tandy Newton, uh, currently set to portray the film's presumably race-swapped version of Astrid, Parker provided this clarification on the live-action remake's creative direction during a recent interview given to Collider in promotion of her upcoming film, Suncoast. So this is the individual. This is Nico Parker. Uh, she's thought to be playing Astrid. That's right, ladies and gents. Typical Viking, uh, Norse-looking individual there. And now we can already start to see why they're changing stuff, can't you? Uh, asked by the outlets Christina Radish as to how she felt about being entrusted with bringing to life a piece of media so beloved, the young actress revealed, I'm nervous about all of it because I care about it so much and everyone cares about it so much and I just so would love to make everyone proud. And that's sweet, you know, this isn't her fault. I'm constantly nervous about it, but to me there was no reason to not do it. Well, I mean, there is, but all right, fine. Uh, it's being made with such brilliant people, and everyone's so talented, and everyone cares about it so deeply. After I spoke to Dean DeBlois, the director who also made the animated movies, I was just like, how could anyone not want to be involved in it? It's amazing, it's stressful, but I'm very, very excited for it to be finished and out into the world, and everyone can experience it. Interesting. So Parker was then pressed by Radish for insight into what fans could expect from the upcoming production in terms of its visuals and narrative takes on the source material. Uh, and she just said, look, I think it's very much its own thing. But I'd like to think so much of that magic is also prevalent in this one. 
But I think it's its own film and its own interpretation and everyone has their own version of a character. It's important not to get too wrapped up, especially because the animated ones are so brilliant. It's like, let's not try and just do a play-by-play -play of that. And if anyone wants that, they can watch the animated ones. I think it'll be wonderful. And if it isn't, I'm having a wonderful time making it anyway. I think it's wonderful no matter what. And like I said, that's some quite, you know, that's some sweet comments from her. But it, it's it's rather, it's a reductive argument to sit there, and I think it's disingenuous as well, to sit there and say, you know, hey, let's not just do a play-by-play -play of, of that. If you want that, go watch the originals. Then don't use the name badge. Don't use the same characters. Call it something different. Set it in the same universe, but a live-action movie in that universe with a different story. Because if you're just going to take elements of it, then yes, you should just do a play-by-play -play of the original. Because it's successful, it will be successful as a film, and it would make you money. Disney has learned this firsthand, and it's why they kept pouring money into these live-action remakes until they started to twist it, and then they weren't doing so well financially. If you do a play-by-play -play of something which is beloved, people will genuinely show up for it. It's fine. There's no issue with that. What people then take umbrage with, which I think vast amount of people will have an issue with this, is you taking the title of a beloved franchise, you know, a popular franchise, and then using it, co-opting that title, that you know, that, that franchise as a vehicle for your nonsense. That's what people then have an issue with. Bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. So, Parker is literally confirmed as Astrid. So, you know, unless they're going to paint her white, she's going to be an interesting looking Norse person. Uh, that's for sure. Very, I mean, it's fucking hell, honestly. Seriously. I do think um, Gerard Butler's back, actually. That's quite cool. There's a lot of good stuff about this and a lot of absolute trash. I mean, look, this is the actor... And, and she was good, actually. So she played um, Pedro Pascal's Joel in The Last of Us, uh, daughter in the, in the opening, like, two scenes, two episodes, sorry. And she was a good actor. It's, honestly, it's nothing against her. It's against the people making it. You've done fucked up. And you've played a dumb game. And you're going to win a dumb prize. But anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know down below. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now.